So I don't know about you, but I grew up watching cartoons, and I know I should have been spending more time with my grandfather learning from him or reading a book. But when I reflect back on that, it was so interesting to me now to see the Fred Flintstone Bedrock Hospital and in that next hour to see the George Jetsons and all of the things of the future and the forecast of what telehealth would be doing for us. And never did I realize that we would actually um, see some of those things come to fruition. You know, I think for us in healthcare, it's getting away with, from some of those traditional ways of thinking. And a quick little story is that when I was growing up, um, I was a little bit larger, a little bit bigger, and a little maybe more mature for my age. And, you know, hospitals were really locked down when it came to children. Um, but with my looks and my maturity, I was able to get into hospital wards where my mother might have been visiting, etc., and able to, to get past some of those traditional or those bedrock ways of thinking that, of course, many years later that we have let go of some of that thinking and we've become more liberal um, and open to the opportunities that are out there in front of us. So um, today I'm speaking to you from the idea of getting outside of our traditional thinking and that traditional brick and mortar setting. I also, in the establishment of hospital at home, um, I've done hospice care and things before, um, but I just happened to be watching Call the Midwife, and I know that's been out there for a while. But I was so inspired by these nurses and what they um, were able to do um, back in their time. Um, and what I believe they were doing was, of course, delivering babies, but they were also, in many ways, practicing hospital at home in its most basic level. I really like seeing how those nurses, when, when the nurse got inside the home and they started seeing those social determinants of health, those influences that were impacting not only the patient's, the mother's health, but the rest of the family's health, they were able to, you know, intervene, do things that improve the health of the community. And that is something that excites me about hospital at home, is being able to have a clear line of sight into um, the lives and the homes um, of our patients. So in the backdrop also of Call the Midwife, I like the history of our health systems, but you may have noticed that, yes, they were formalizing what hospitals would be and become, and they did have wards, but they also had a capacity problem because there were many episodes where they pointed out that the patient needed to wait at home until a hospital bed became available. So with that and the backdrop has been something that has really, you know, turning in my mind. And as you see here, the hospital at home or the World Congress for Hospital at Home um, has said that in our early beginnings that everything that could possibly be treated at home, it was treated at home. But we know we have swung the pendulum hard, um, especially here in the United States. When you look across the globe um, in hospital at home, um, we know that other countries such as Israel, the UK, Canada, and Australia, that they are practicing hospital at home, and it is really a mainstay of the care that they offer. Um, these are, of course, single-payer health systems where they um, look more intently at how do they drive value, how do they reduce the cost, um, how do they control the cost, um, but they've also recognized that their populations and those um, um, patients who are geriatric are older. They've also realized the benefits of being able to um, be cared for in your home um, as a preference um, for the care. So in these countries, it's a mainstay of care. I put this advertisement that I, I snatched um, from um, the internet for a referral for hospital at home for Australia. And you'll see the, how it's advertised and it's put out there to the public and you'll see the diagnosis, the kidney disease, the cellulitis. And then it says down at the bottom that they might start adding additional things to their hospital at home model of care. And what's really interesting to me is the word free on that advertisement. I mean, when do we ever see anything in our healthcare system that's put in front of our patients as something that's free? So these are countries that are um, recognized for doing hospital at home and doing it well. And I think it's important to also mention that they really have a primed 
public or primed populations who understand that when they have certain illnesses or conditions that they will likely be cared for in their home. And that's in contrast to something here in the United States that we really do not have a public that has come to realize that they can be um, cared for their, on their, in their home setting. Um, we're very much so dependent on our hospitals um, for um, delivering um, the care. So there's a key, or a few key events um, that have uh, emerged here in the United States that really have gotten us to where we are with hospital at home today. And in 1998, um, Dr. Bruce Left, who I regard as our father of hospital at home for the United States, up at John Hopkins, um, he recognized with his own patients that there were certain trends, certain conditions, and certain reasons for why we should be treating patients at home. Now, he didn't have a payment model for that because there was no payer that was willing to sponsor a patient for hospital at home. But he went out and he was able to um, contract with the local payers there in the Baltimore area to say, hey, I want to do this. And for the reasons of it's the right thing to do for the patients, the right care, the right setting, all of these things. And so in setting up that contract and being able to start the first demonstration project that we can care for patients at home, he set us on a trajectory for more hospitals to start doing this. So in the early Early 2000s, taking um, taking the lead of Dr. Left, there were other hospitals who replicated that, and they were able to partner with um, their local payers to come up with a way to be reimbursed. Um, we get to 2010, and CMS takes note of what's happening with hospital at home, and through their innovation arm, I think I believe they put out about 10 to 12 million dollars in grant money for more hospitals to um, to pick up and, uh, and start replicating these results and contributing to that evidence base. And that gets us to 2016 um, when the first meta-analysis was performed on the data that we had to date, and that was by Shepard. And they were able to validate that hospital at home care or avoidance of a hospital admission was a reasonable and safe alternative to traditional care when the right constructs of the ability to return a patient back to the hospital for decline, et cetera, um, were in place. So with that, um, in 2016 to 2018, we have tech companies who really get into the wearable devices, how do we accelerate um, the use of, of patients using um, technology to monitor and oversee their own health. Um, and then COVID, of course, happens, and that changed everything. And when it, just the implosion of the patient volumes, et cetera, you know, we were all in crisis, and the big question was, you know, what do we do about our bed capacity? We couldn't let patients into the hospital for, you know, reasons that, you know, it might take up the, the bed or they might be exposed to COVID, even though they didn't have COVID. So CMS answered that for us, and as, as having recognized what was happening with hospital at home, they came out with the initiative Hospitals Without Walls, which then allowed for or, or the development of an acute hospital at home um, waiver program. So hospitals who were already, of course, CMS um, certified could um, go online and do a formal, um, very involved application and have an interview with CMS to then be vetted to um, have the, uh, um, the award status of operating hospital at home. So what that has brought us to across the nation here is the adoption of how many hospitals and health systems have actually taken um, part of the, the CMS waiver. And so um, since I wrote this slide a few weeks ago, there's been four additional um, hospitals and health systems who have been awarded the CMS status. 
Um, interestingly, I do not have a, a reason for why those states who have not adopted it, um, the only thing I can think of is that some leader um, there has simply not um, picked up on it or recognized the need, or maybe there's other encumbrances from a regulatory standpoint in those states. Um, and interestingly, I was just talking to Leslie, our moderator from California, and I was going to tell you the story in California is that even though they have um, programs who are approved by CMS, um, I believe it's the nurses union out there who has really said no to hospital at home, and they have um, enacted either a moratorium or legislation. And so um, hospitals have, have attempted hospital at home in California, but they have not been able to um, sustain it. Um, and I think the nurses really cited that they felt like that um, patients deserved a proper hospital bed for their care, and that also that it would take too many nurses away from their inpatient units and that they did not need that in California.